So what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of days is mounting the subfloor, which is really exciting. Um, and so there's a couple of stages to that. I've actually already ripped up all my blue tape, which was helping me to plan out my floor plan. Obviously that need needs to be ripped up off the floor. I've already done that. Uh, next, I'm going to sweep out the van and then clean it with denatured alcohol and obviously um, <clears throat> a cloth for that. Uh, that's really the first step that I'm going to be doing this afternoon. And then tomorrow I'm going to be going to buy two by twos. Um, I've really spent today actually mapping out the framing of the subfloor. So you'll see me do that next. Um, and then I also need to create a template for the plywood that will go on top of the frame. Okay, um, at the moment I have some of my insulation material, which is some granulated cork, and I'm still waiting on my Havelock wool order. So what I'm probably gonna do is do a temporary seal of the cork down um, as I need to go and do uh, some traveling. So I'll have that in place, and then I'll just unmount it when I get the Havelock wool and finish the insulation part. Uh, one thing or a few things to think about when you're preparing your subfloor is what's going to be going uh, any holes basically you're going to be drilling through for example for your outlet for your grey water if you have undermounted grey water um, if you have inlets for propane which I do because I'm going to undermount my propane tank if you have positions for your diesel heater or your propane or propex heater there's going to need to be places that you're actually drilling holes in the van for the the um, gas or the diesel to come in and out okay or the exhaust in the case of a diesel heater so think about those things because i'm going to frame around them you'll see me doing that because i've already had a good look underneath and know where they need to go so that's one thing to think about so um i think that's all um if you haven't subscribed subscribe over here to the channel and um i'll show you what i'm doing next hi i'm candace i'm a lover of mountains and meditation and have decided to minimize my life buy a sprinter van and convert it into a tiny home on wheels Having a background in interior design, I'm going to give you my tips, views and experience on design and how to project manage your conversion whilst being a total novice at doing the actual build. Well, that ended up being more than I thought it was going to be. This is a second-hand van and it was pretty scratched up at the base. So I just wanted to make sure it was well and truly um, sealed before we start putting things on top. So I'm just going to let that dry. See you back tomorrow. Good morning. So I'm kind of excited. I'm heading out for my first lumber run to Home Depot. I've worked out exactly how to do the subfloor and so I'm about to go out and get lumber. So I'll see you, see you there. So here I am in Home Depot and uh, shopping for my first sub floor project. And I have this crazy situation where we're in the middle of a lumber crisis. And so I can't find the right plywood. And it's also four times more expensive than pre-COVID. This is what I'm dealing with. Empty plywood shells are the type of ply I need to construct things with. And it's just nuts. Look at the prices. <laughs> Crazy times. I'm excited. I've got everything for my first round. There's it all sitting in the back there, which is where it's going to end up. <laughs> so that was fairly painless. People are always really, really helpful at Home Depot, so I, I enjoy being here. So now I take it home. Okay, so today I continue the subfloor installation. So what are you going to need today? We're going to need like heavy duty paper or cardboard, if you like, to create a template of your 
floor plan outline from which you will end up cutting your plywood to okay <clears throat> if you see it's snowing white petals at the moment it's because it is it's just after spring and all the petals are falling off the trees it's absolutely gorgeous um, and then after that you're going to need a few things here so in my van at the moment I have plywood for the subfloor I have two by twos nominal two by twos for the frame of the subfloor um, for insulation I have Havelock wool which actually just arrived today so it's perfect timing and I also have here I have granulated cork for my floor insulation and I'll show you all that when I start installing um, and then you also need Loctite PL3 premium or some sort of adhesive to adhere the frame to the metal. To cut the plywood, I'm using my jigsaw with a, uh, a wood blade. And then we need ear protection. We need eye protection. We need uh, always the tape measure and then wood screws, wood to wood screws. And I have another conversation another day about using the type of fastener you need for the project. These are wood screws. They're what you need for this project. And then, <clears throat> last but not least, around here, we have our chop saw. Okay? That's how I'm going to at least be cutting my stuff up. So that's, um, that's the stuff you're going to need for this project today. And it's getting cold, so I need to put a vest on. So I'll see you on the inside. There's my template. Hey, hey. So just a few things to consider when you're cutting your template. So I'm cutting it as much to the floor as I can. But there's a few things here, like around the wheel well, this is vertical, so I can cut it straight to this edge. This here, however, on these curved edges, I stuck a piece of my frame underneath. You can see how it's sticking up a bit because by the time it gets up here, the uh, the ply needs to sit closer to this. So that's why that's sort of bunched up there because it'll be fine once it's cut. Um, then I've tried to cut out as many of these little cutouts as I can so that when I'm cutting the ply for the first time, it's gonna actually cut to the shape. Um, and obviously around all of these bulkheads and that kind of thing. Here on the sprinter, I had to cut this back because this sort of spilled out to here. So I just cut that off. So I can frame it right to the edge. Now this is an interesting one because I'm going to have cabinets that come out to here. What I want to make sure is that my ply also comes out to here. So this is why doing your floor plan in advance is really important. I'll also be putting framing out to here. So, and I kind of want that one to look like that too. So consider all of these things before you cut out your template because everything you um, draw on here, everything you create here, you just trace around and then you've got easy, easy peasy way to cut out your flooring, your plywood. So what you can see here is three four by eight pieces of three quarter inch plywood, just laid out flat. Um, and I'm going to put the uh, template on top of it and trace around it, which I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go down because it's really windy, but I'm going to give it a go. So before I do anything else, I'm going to actually bring in the 
uh, freshly cut plywood and I'm gonna check it on the floor before I sand it or do anything else because it's likely I'm gonna have to make a few little adjustments. If you're seeing it snowing out there, it's cause it is. <laughs> so I'm just actually cutting up the frame today. And yes, it's cold. So the last part of today's project is gluing down the two by twos to the ribs on the floor. I'm using Loctite Peel 3 times Premium, lots of it, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's what I'm doing next. So here it goes. Okay, for some reason I'm super excited today because I am uh, finished the floor and it's all glued down. It's had its 24 hours to cure and, um, um, and I'm about to put in the insulation. Hence I'm wearing my Havelock wool t-shirt because it's one of the uh, non-toxic ingredients in my van build that's really important to me and so is the granulated cork and so I'm going to be putting them down today this is sort of the fun bit because then after I do that I just attach the plywood that I already cut out the other day so we're in the really fun last part of things I do want to show you a few things before I cover it up though and before I vacuum so one thing to make a note of a few things in my frame um, I put the frame right up hard against the edge of this strip here, so it's in line pretty much with this edge. Okay, that's just a choice I made, and you're going to make choices like this yourself. Okay, um, I've got little, you'll see when I put my plywood in that I've got little cutouts that I haven't drilled out yet. Um, everything else has gone hard to the edge because this has to be filled with cork and hard up to this edge. And as I said the other day, I cut this down to be level with here. So that's possible. I've got a cut out here which is going to be a drain. And what's important here is the, how I've extended the frame out from the van here, across here, for my cabinets, okay? And I've also put a little uh, platform underneath so that I can seal it with insulation. So you're constantly having to think where is cold going to get in in the winter and uh, that kind of thing you're just always thinking about how can I seal it up how can I seal it up so I'm going to be able to put insulation in there now because I have put a bottom on it so now to vacuuming because I don't want things caught so I'm going to vacuum everything okay and now I'm going to start putting the insulation in between the frame on the subfloor, which is going to be with uh, granulated cork, which I'll put down first, and then I'm going to put the Havelock wool, which is what this is. I'm excited. Enjoy.
completed. Oh, it feels good. Big few. Welcome back, hello. So the last thing to complete the subfloor part of the subfloor installation is actually sealing the subfloor. So I've got this product called Olympic Water Guard um, and it says four-way protection and repels water, UV protection, uh, mildew resistance and penetrates the surface for protection. Um, I'm going to be putting a waterproof uh, vinyl, wood looking vinyl on top of that but if anything does get underneath I don't want it pooling, I don't want it mildewing etc etc. So this is a really nice light sweet project in that I don't need eye protection, ear protection, hand protection. Um, it's basically going to be rolling a roller brush and uh, just a little roller container and I'll have a brush for doing the edges. So super simple. That's what we're doing today. Voila, water sealed. So there we have it, my subfloor completed. And so I just want to do my um, review, what worked, what I'd do differently. Um, so there's many stages to this. It's quite an important project because once you've got things on top of your subfloor, there's no repairing mistakes. So in terms of project management, which are what is what I want you to start thinking about, is you've got to constantly think about what needs to go first, what needs to be shored up in case, you know, of the next things going on top of it, etc., etc. And the subfloor is a major part of that. Now, it's quite well known that a lot of heat or cold escapes up through the subfloor of vans, right? And so insulation is really, really important in your subfloor. I've ended up losing about two and a half inches of height to get a lot of insulation in my subfloor, okay? That was a good decision. Um, in between doing this clear coating is the very last step. I actually ended up having to drive for about three and a half hours in each direction to pack up and move out of my, own, my old apartment. It got me to test it out. So a few things were fantastic. Nothing squeaks. I've got a good 150 bread nails in the top. It's been glued to the frame. The frame's been glued to the van. Um, everything's been cured properly. You know what I mean by that is when you're gluing your subfloor to the van base, let it cure because as soon as you put something on top of it and start um, attaching something to the frame, it's going to want to pull it up from what it's adhered to. So if you don't let it dry, you're going to pull it up off and then you, then you start getting squeaks and that kind of thing. So that worked really well. I'm trying to think if anything didn't work in this project. It was great to do a template that worked really, really well. That being said, even though I did a template um, and then I traced the template and then I cut out the template, it still needed tweaking. That's normal. That happens often with any sort of custom fitting. Any woodworker or metal worker will tell you that. Um, so that was just a bit of hard work, schlepping around three quarter inch plywood in and out of the van, in and out of the van, in and out of the van, whilst I was correcting that. That was, that was hard work. Um, hard yakka, as we say in Australia. Um, I also screwed the frame together wherever I could. Everything screwed and glued. <laughs> screwed and glued the frame. Again, I was trying to make sure there was going to be no squeaking, there was going to be, uh, it was going to be super solid. Now, a real wonderful benefit I realized already when I went on this drive was how much the granulated cork and the Havelock wool absorbed sound. Because it's on the base here, the amount of road noise was dropped. I wish I had actually had a decibel meter at the very beginning of the project and then progressively checked the decibels in the van while I was driving it. Anyway, 
I'm telling you it was a lot quieter and that's before I've even insulated the walls and the ceiling so that was amazing benefit that feels so so cool and it does feel warmer I can't exactly explain why even though everything else hasn't been insulated and there's no heating but it already feels a lot warmer um, it has also delineated my build space so now I can start building on top of it which is amazing Look, the only thing I would do differently is if you are able to know exactly where all of your holes are that you need to drill down into the van, you've made all of your decisions about your heater, your propane location, whether it's undermounted or on top, um, the position of your diesel or your propane heater, the position of all of your plumbing. If you've done all that first, if you're that organized or if those things have arrived in time that would be better to have done first okay what i did is i cut out holes um, little trap doors so that i can do that now um, and i need to do that pretty soon because i can't actually put my flooring on top until those holes have been drilled and of course you can't just drill a hole somewhere you need to know the size of the hole right so that's one thing i'd recommend otherwise i'm really happy with this project it went really, really well. It's super solid and I'm excited about the next stages. So again, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe over here if you haven't subscribed yet and please put any comments or questions below. I'm going to endeavor to get to them as soon as I can and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next project. Bye-bye for now.